Welcome back, everybody. So we're on to the last of the rolled edges, or at least last of the rolled edges for the empennage. Uh, I have no idea what the wings have in store. Hopefully there are no more rolled edges. This is the rudder. Um, this went much, much better than the elevators. Don't get me wrong. I still absolutely hate rolling the edges. There's got to be a better way, or they could be preformed, or a cap. I don't know. Anything. Anything but this. So, still found from all of my previous attempts, the best way is just those shorter pieces of PVC pipe. Gorilla tape and vice grips. A second set of vice grips would be even more helpful, so I can grab both ends of the pipe at once. But um, getting it getting it bent all the way the first go round is, is key. The only thing I think I had an issue with here on the rudder was the smallest flange, which is all the way up there at the top. Uh, the first one didn't quite bend as straight as I wanted it to. And then when I went and bent the second side, um, I didn't pay attention to the fact that the pipe was bending that first side back in. So it almost put a sharp edge in it. Thankfully it didn't, but it definitely pulled it over and made it a lot more unmanageable. But this went much quicker. I, I think this whole process took me, I don't know, maybe 45 minutes for this one that includes riveting it so gets better as you go and and you learn techniques and yeah those bottom ones are real easy to get to because I can go I can stick the pipe out past the end and actually crank on it all the way as far as I need to go they still ended up really far apart though not sure how that happened because the radius was right the bend was in the right spot I had to pull them over pretty good to to get them to line up which I thought the idea was to not bend along the uh, spar line there but yeah, there you can see me trying to undo what was done to that that top one when uh, when it got caught by the pipe you can see I got just a little tiny bow in that lip But in the end, it worked out. I think I still prefer solid rivets, but getting quicker and quicker at it. I've also got a technique down now with that Milwaukee rivet gun to where it doesn't doesn't seem to want to jam as much as it did. I'm not totally convinced on if there's value added with that thing or not. I suppose if you're doing an all pull riveted plane, probably. So last few, and then I'm going to slow the video down and get you a, a shot of the edge so you can kind of see what it looked like, because I don't think I actually did that with the elevators. There you go, all riveted. Throw up a picture of the completed edge. There you go. The seam did end up nice and tight. I did use the edge tool to put a slight bend in the overlapping edge just so it would sit down nice and tight on it, which you can do to the whole thing except that very top one because you can't roll all the way up because of the counterbalance arm sticking out there. So now I got my 3D printed bearing tool out again, and I am setting the height on all of those bearings. Each one has its own height. It's referenced on the plans. You just measure from the spar to the center of the hole in the bearing. And I'm getting them as close as I can. Eventually I'll get it hung on the uh, vertical stab and make sure that it's all straight and spins freely. They also have a jam nut on them, which I'm not entirely sure why. Because um, 
technically, once that is in the hinge, it can't spin in or out. But they provide a jam nut until you'd install one, so um, I installed one. I'll get you another look at the edge. You can see the bearings installed. I've got a set of crow's feet on order so I can tighten those jam nuts down. I'll have to look up if there's a torque on them later. I'm sure there probably is. But onward to the servo motor. I ordered a... I had a small Molex connector kit, but it only went up to four pins. So I ordered a six-pin micro Molex connector. Well, a couple of them to put on here because there are five wires coming off of that servo. For the majority of the connections in the plane, at least the ones out on wingtips and stuff, I'd like to try and use the Deutsch connectors because they're weatherproof and a little more rugged. I opted not to do that with this because a connector big enough, uh, a six pin Deutsch connector ends up being really large. I think it's, uh, I want to say it's almost an inch in diameter, or it's like seven eighths. And I want to be able to feed this connector through the smallest hole that I possibly can. I'm not going to share the hole that the jack screw goes through. I just haven't decided where I'm going to put that hole yet, but I do have some snap bushings for it now. So anyways, I'm pinning the wires right now and I'm getting them inserted into the connector. I also redid that servo plate, the mount plate. So I think I mentioned it in the previous video, the servo is now centered on the mount plate. Makes me feel better, appeases my OCD. Now I'm just making a couple of test leads and I'm pinning them into the female side of the connector. That way I can hook it up to power and just verify that I did get it pinned correctly and the trim motor still actuates in and out like it's supposed to. So I'll slow it down again and let you watch the live action of the servo motor moving. Get you a little better angle. And of course I've got my hand in the way so you can't see it moving that direction. But now you can see it moving out. Never gets old seeing stuff move that's supposed to move. So there's a shot of it all finished. It's ready to go back into the elevator, which I got to take that one off anyways and redo the counterbalance weight. So that'll probably be one of the next videos. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this uh, short one. There's a final shot. I'll see you all in the next one.